Hi, this is Dr. Katie Bailey, and today we're going to discuss how to read a 4D parathyroid CT. The objectives of this talk are to discuss parathyroid CT, review imaging findings, and do a few practice cases to utilize our new skills. So what is 4D parathyroid CT? It's really just a multi-phase CT of the neck with contrast. Time is considered to be the fourth dimension of the 4D. So the three phases, just like with all other multi-phase scan, there's usually a non-contrast set, an arterial set that's 25 to 30 seconds after contrast injection, a venous phase, which is 60 to 80 seconds after contrast injection, and you do these in all three planes of imaging, axial, sagittal, and coronal. The indication for these 4D parathyroid CTs should be known hyperparathyroidism, usually diagnosed by hypercalcemia. So as you remember, the thyroid glands, paired lobes, and the parathyroid glands are intimately related to the thyroid glands. You usually can't see them very well on CT. They tend to be kind of stuck up on the posterior border of the thyroid glands. You have superior and inferior sets of parathyroid glands. So the search pattern when looking for a parathyroid adenoma, you're looking around the thyroid gland, especially posteriorly. You're looking for a round or oval shaped nodule, especially if there's one with a polar vessel. So it would be going, the polar vessel would be at the pole of the nodule as opposed to a lymph node, which would usually be a hilar vessel. Uh, the superior parathyroid glands are posterior to the tracheoesophageal groove and inferior glands are anterior to the tracheoesophageal groove. So when you have adenomas, you can kind of use that as a general rule of thumb. Um, if you don't find it in a patient with known hypercalcemia slash hyperparathyroidism, look in some weird places. Check the parapharyngeal space. Check the retropharyngeal space. Check the carotid space. Check the upper mediastinum and check in that tracheoesophageal groove. So here's an example of a parathyroid adenoma. You can see this round nodule posterior to the posterior border of the right lobe of the thyroid gland. So separate from it, you see a little bit of plane on the axial image. Here it is on the saddle, sagittal image. So here's the nodule, here's the thyroid gland, and here's the representative Sestamibi scan, which shows uptake in that right thyroid bed separate from the thyroid gland. So this is kind of a classic appearance of that parathyroid adenoma on just post-contrast imaging and that nuclear medicine Sestamibi scan. So here it is in a little bit more detail. So on the non-contrast images, you'd like the nodule to be lower in density than thyroid tissue. That thyroid tissue is more hyperdense. So you see this nodule posterior to the left lobe of the thyroid gland is hypodense compared to the gland itself. I did some measurements to show you. These aren't the exact measurements that you would see with every parathyroid adenoma. I just wanted to show you an example of how parathyroid adenomas tend to be hypodense compared to the normal thyroid tissue without contrast. Remember, however, parathyroid adenomas can be calcified, they can be hemorrhagic, or they can have cystic or fatty changes within them, which may give them more of a heterogeneous density. In the arterial phase, you would like to see the nodule enhance more avidly than thyroid tissue. So on this coronal example, you see the arrow pointing to the parathyroid adenoma. The Hounsfield units of the adenoma are higher than the Hounsfield units of the thyroid tissue itself. On the venous phase of imaging, you would like to see the nodule wash out more than the thyroid tissue. On this example, you can see the nodule, the mean Hounsfield units are 96, whereas in the thyroid, it's 154 Hounsfield units. So that is what kind of the classic appearance of the adenoma would look like. Now here is a practice case. We have images, the non-contrast coronal. We have the arterial phase coronal and we have the venous phase coronal. So if you look in that uh, retrothyroidal region, you can see this nice oval-shaped hypodense nodule. If you look at it on the arterial phase, you can see it is enhancing with contrast. And if you look on the venous phase, you can see there is some washout of the contrast. So again, this is more of a classic appearance of a parathyroid adenoma. 
Here's the same nodule on the sagittal images. You can see it is posterior too, but slightly separate from the thyroid gland, the non-contrast image. The post-contrast image shows it's a little bit hypodense compared to the gland, although on, on the axial images, when you did the Hounsfield units, you could see it is enhancing. And here it is on the venous phase, again, separate from the gland posterior to it with some washout of the contrast. And the same patient on their nuclear medicine Sestamibi scan, you can see uptake that is separate from the thyroid gland and that left inferior aspect. So the Sestamibi scan was positive and the 4D CT was positive. Case two. This one's a little bit more complex. So on the axial image, you could see the thyroid gland, normal right lobe of the thyroid gland. On the left, the thyroid gland is displaced anteriorly. And you can see this heterogeneous density mass posterior to the thyroid gland displacing it anteriorly. And you can see all of this hypodense material extending into that retropharyngeal region. On the coronal image, it almost has an egg shape. You can see that heterogeneous density, internal areas that are more hyperdense, more hypodense, scalloping of that thyroid gland, as well as that hypodense material surrounding the lesion. And same thing on the sagittal. You can see that nice egg shape separate from the thyroid gland posterior to it with some scalloping of that margin of the thyroid gland and the hypodense material around it. This was a case that we published of a ruptured slash hemorrhagic parathyroid adenoma. The patient had undiagnosed hypercalcemia, came in with difficulty swallowing, and it turned out that this was a parathyroid adenoma. It was surgically resected, and this was found to be hemorrhage from the large adenoma that had extended into that retropharyngeal space. So remember when looking for a parathyroid adenoma that you're looking for pieces to the puzzle. The patient should have already been diagnosed with hypercalcemia and hyperparathyroidism. So you are taking those pieces and you're looking for a nodule that is separate from but adjacent to the thyroid gland, that if it's following the classic enhancement pattern, it should be hypodense to the gland on non-contrast, it should be hyper-enhancing compared to the thyroid gland itself, and it should have earlier washouts. So it would be hypodense as compared to the thyroid gland on the venous phase. And if you can't find it, keep looking in weird places, and remember it can have a weird appearance if it's hemorrhagic, cystic, or calcified. Thank you for your attention.